have a question. Yeah, go ahead. You went through therapy for a year but didn't talk about this? You we, mentioned it. We, it, was, it was like, it was like you know how you scale over something? Yeah. You don't really clean the whole county. You just kind of... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Welcome to episode three of After Love, the official Black Love After Show. I've already started drinking because it's late and that's what I do. And I'm really excited to be joined by two couples that I adore. Tony and Tracy, who were just in the episode, and Melanie and Anthony, who I want to, I wanted you guys to join us to share a little bit of your history. And one of the things that I learned, I think, in putting these episodes together, and specifically from all the couples who talked about mental health, um, and also the way that the show comes together is that we interview all of the couples and then we see what themes emerge. Like, we're not really trying to force it. It's like, oh, they talked about this, they talked about this, and then we put it together as organically as we can based on like, oh, this seems to be important. And so something that stood out to me was the understanding that when mental health issues come up, and or trauma. And really what, what they come up as, as you guys mentioned, is like, oh, he was snippy, right? They, they, they show their se themselves in different ways. Um, a lot of the times people run. And I think, and I wanna hear you guys' opinion on this, is that some of the things that, that we should be thinking about when this stuff happens in our relationships, no matter whether we're dating or married, is first, where does it come from? Because a lot of us will run from the hills just to like, oh, he got attitude. Right. Is this person willing to work on it? And am I up for it? Am I up for this as the as the other person in the relationship, right? Um, and that's what I think I've learned. I'm curious what you guys think about that. And then, of course, I want you guys to share a little bit of your backstory. When I first started to see the signs, first of all, I knew who he was. I knew the man that he was. I knew who I married. And so when I started to see something different, I, and I'm one of those people, I'm not, someone who takes things at face value anyway. It's always something behind whatever I see. And so um, when I saw that, I knew that it was something going on with him. I didn't know exactly what, but I, re I was very well aware of the trauma that he experienced in his life. So, you know, it kind of put two and two together and said, you know, it has to be something stemming from that, mm -hmm. especially when I know that he had never really dealt with it mm -hmm. like he should have. And, and at some point, I figured, and I never really shared this with him, but I figured even in the beginning that this was gonna have to be something that we were gonna deal with e um, eventually mm. in our marriage. Mm. I did. Wow. I felt that even from the beginning. I knew that he had suffered something traumatic in his life. And so if you hadn't dealt with that, it's gonna come up at some point. Mm -hmm. And then when it happened, I sh as I shared on the episode, I being that I had some issues myself um, stemming from my childhood, um, an absentee father, um, feeling rejected, um, and being disappointed all the time from my dad. So I kind of felt like, you know, I started to take this thing personal in the beginning, feeling like, okay, here's that feeling of rejection. Here's that feeling of disappointment. You know, things aren't gonna happen the way that I wanted them to happen, here it, here it is, you know? And so I had to separate. I had to like really pay attention to what was really going on and separate and realize that this is not really what, this is not, it's not about me, this is about him. But one of the things that I loved learning about you was that you both had experienced traumas in your past. And when you were dating, there were moments where e either of you could have just said, oh, this is too much. Right. So will you talk a little bit about why and we, you know, there's one date in particular that you mentioned to me, but what made you say, I want to just give him some space and some peace and some support? Um, so the date that you're talking about, we went out on a date and I knew that he had trauma. I knew that, um, you know, he had suffered the loss of two children that he had been raising and then found out when they were four years old, they were not his children. And that was devastating to him. Uh, it was betrayal. He had experienced betrayal in relationship. And we were out on a date. We were at a little Mexican restaurant. We were having a good time. And Chinese he, restaurant. Oh, sorry, Chinese, <laughs> sorry. I knew it was ethnic. Uh, and he just got really quiet, which he would do. He would start to shut down. And I noticed that he would do it, but I, 
I understand trauma. I had trauma, so I knew what was happening. And um, he got up and excused himself, and he didn't come back. And so 10 minutes went by and then 15 minutes went by. And you know, this is the nineties. We've been together 30 years. So this was the nineties. I was like, I don't have no money. I don't have a credit card. You leave me in this restaurant. What's going on? Um, but I sat patiently and I was like, I trust him. He's going to come back. Um, and I just believed in love. I've always believed in love and I just loved him. And I knew because I experienced trauma that when you have trauma, you need someone to provide a safe space for that. Absolutely. And for you to be able to reveal that mm -hmm. without judgment, we all have an inner world. And that's the amazing part of relationship is you have a safe, safe space to reveal that inner world. And he had revealed mm. that to me. Mm -hmm. And so I knew, and I just waited. And I just told myself if he left, I'll check on him later, I'll figure it out. But it, he literally was gone for 30 minutes. And then he came back. Yeah. And the reason that I left was because I would have anxiety attacks and I had trust issues. And so there was always like this little voice in my head going, you're being stupid, you're being a sucker again, you're gonna get played again, you're being dumb, you're falling for another pretty chick again, don't go for it, run, run, run. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yes, but I'm feeling it. So when that happened, I was literally outside fighting with that. And after about 30 minutes, you know, I just kept focusing on what I loved and appreciated about it, what I appreciated about it, what I appreciated about it. And that helped me to come back. And when I got, got back, I explained it, what was going on. But like she said, she provided me with that safe space to be able to be honest. And you know, and honesty was a really important thing in our relationship right from the beginning. From our first date, it was like, what's important to you? And we both agreed that honesty, no matter what you're going through, if we're going to make this work, we need to be able to talk about everything and anything, the good, the bad, the ugly, regardless. And so that really helped me to get through it. I think that men get a bad rap for not wanting to talk about feelings. I mean, I say I think that, but it, what do you think? Is that fair? Yeah, that's true. I, I think one of the most amazing things in life is that women are taught to be verbal. And I think that the sad part about it is uh, a lot of men, um, and I have to separate and say, especially black men, we're not taught to verbalize how we feel. We're taught to hold in our emotions, no matter what we deal with, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, we are taught to hold it in. And so when you are no longer verbal, you internalize. When you internalize, it's uh, basically dynamite. And sooner or later, someone's going to say something or do something that's going to cause you to blow up and it has nothing to do with them. Uh, unfortunately, for the years that I dealt with, uh, probably a little bit over 40 years I dealt with depression, um, I was on cruise control. You were always taught you take care of family. Losing my sisters, my niece, my brother, and my mom, you just go along with it because you have to take care of family. But who's taking care of you? Who's voicing and saying, I got you? I didn't learn I got you until I met my wife. I didn't learn um, that it's okay to cry, it's all okay to be vulnerable and very transparent, and I'm, I'm gonna cover you and not crucify you. And I think that when we look at uh, relationships, we need to look at it as, um, I'm sacrificing myself for you and you're sac sacrificing yourself for me. When you look at it from a one-sided standpoint and say, oh no, it's all about me, myself and I, then you might as well stay single. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. That's true. One of the things I've, I've heard both of you, both couples say, is that you all revealed your experiences mm -hmm. right early, right away. Oh, like you told your partner what you had been through, even yeah. if you hadn't dealt with it and whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and so do you think that, did you do that because you were like, I trust this person? Or was that sort of your MO? in relationships to just be like, like, did you know I'm probably carrying something alongside this? I don't, you know, were you revealing t for a reason beyond just, oh, this is information? I was telling one of my friends, I said, it's very easy for a man to give you um, a credit card, buy some clothes or help you with some gas in the car or whatever. Very far and few of us will give our hearts to a woman. And if you have our heart, you have all the other stuff that's along with it. So when I met Tracy and I, and I, 
could see her and see through where she was and her transparent, her, her being vulnerable towards me. And she covered me and I felt safe. I was able to open up and tell her. I mean, because everything else was jokes with me all the time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> with her, it was like, you know what? I don't even have to do that. I can literally be me, you know? And I felt safe and I didn't, I didn't worry about it later on. Well, that's why your mama don't like it, because you're <laughs> crazy stuff, you know? You just, you just knew that she had your back, right. you know? And so for me, that's, that's when I just went ahead and opened up and I said, you know what? I feel in a very safe space and I really, really believe that she could cover me even when people don't see that side of me. And for me, um, I, I don't believe in shallow, you know? So when we first started dating or just talking, you know, even, I think also what attributed to our depth in our relationship was the fact that we weren't having sex. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you guys were, that's all we had. That's you all guys we dated two yeah. years. Yeah, we dated you two and a half Two years. and a half, and you were abstinent. We were abstinent. <laughs> so because of that, um, I know everyone has something, you know, and he joked a lot. And I, one day I had to tell him, I said, look, enough with the jokey jokes. Let's just get down to business because I know it's a cover for something. Yeah. And so I told him that one day and he was like, <sighs> Okay, you know, and then we just really were able to communicate. Not that he wasn't transparent, because he's always been transparent. And that's the part that made me fall in love with him in the first place, because I had never met any man that was that transparent and that open about, you know, what he was dealing with, who he was. But also, I like the fact that he was very introspective. Yeah. yeah. And that was, to me, his greatest quality. What does it look like and this is, you know, y'all could tell me there's, I know this is like presumptive or there could be no, like a no answer, but what does it look like to be healed? I just had this realization the other day. My best client has been me. <laughs> I have been my own client for 54 years. I love it. I love it. And um, I'm super compassionate and empathetic towards other people because I've lived through a lot of trauma in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's easy for me to talk about it because I'm actually proud of it. Mm -hmm. It's made me who I am. Absolutely. It has stretched me. It has made me grow in ways that I know if I did not have it, I would not be who I am. And I love who I am. Yes. And that's the journey. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it life work. And I look forward to continuing to do that work. Yeah. Uh, little Melanie, my inner child, she and I are like this. <laughs> and I always check in with her. And so when I met Anthony, I could see that he was on the same path and he was doing his work. And in our relationship, when we have fights, we have the saying, we don't fight to win, we fight to grow. Right. Because we know every fight, like you said, there's well, something under it, not right? Quite. Passionate debate. Passionate debate. Passionate debate. Passionate debate. Passionate debate. That's it. Words, words have meaning. That's right. So in our passionate debates, it is, we are, it's not our ego. We're not trying to win or dominate each other. We're understanding each other yes. more and more and more and more and more. And that's going to be for the life of our marriage as well. I'm still learning things about him 30 absolutely. years later. So absolutely. things about myself. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, you, and for me, likewise, like what Melanie was saying, it's life work. Yeah. And in the, my first marriage, I learned what I wanted. It helped me to figure out my preferences because I felt boxed in. I was being what everybody else expected me to be, what society expected me to be, who I was supposed to be, even not expressing my yes. emotions. And that didn't work out too well. So I promised myself that it was like, I'm gonna recreate myself. I know what I want next. I want a relationship where I can talk about everything. Um, where my partner, where we have that trust. And so once I went out in the world, those little things would pop up, those old traumas. But instead of looking at it like a curse, I looked at it like Melanie was saying, it helped me to grow. It helped me to be better. It helped me to figure out what I wanted, who I wanted to be. And so that process is going to this day. Every now and then something will still pop up. It's like, whoa, I didn't know that was there. Yeah. And it's like, okay, let me roll up my sleeves. Let me work on this. Yes. But it really came down to acceptance and gratitude and appreciation. That's it. That's it. Yeah, well, for us, um, for me, I will say um, it is a process for sure. It's a lifelong. You'll never get, you know, 
quote unquote, completely healed because there are things that are always happening in your life that you have to deal with and grow from and all that stuff. So yeah, it is growth and process. That's how we interact with each other. You know, um, we're able to share, you know, if we see something, just like we said on the, you know, the show, that if we see something, you know, um, peeking up, and maybe you haven't seen it, we will point it out, right. you know? And, and it's just for us to grow, but we do respect each other enough, and it is a safe enough environment for us to really share those things without the other person being offended, you know, or getting too defensive or anything like that. So that's how we have established our, our home, you know, as a safe place that, that we could be really transparent. And, about and your partner, is the perfect mirror for you. Mm -hmm. Because they will bring that stuff up. Yes, you will see will. that, that stuff will come up and they'll be like, hey, you see that right there? And it's yep. like, what? I didn't, yep. you got a bugger right here. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see that. And Absolutely. So, yeah, Absolutely. so having that partner, to, yes. you know, yeah, they'll bring it up. Yep. It'll, it'll come up. You can't always see yourself. Yeah. No, yeah. Right. not always. Right. You, sure you do can. need the mirror of you a partner. Do. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And you have to trust them yes. so that when they say what they see, exactly, you're not going, you tripping. Right. Yeah. That's not real. Well, oh, even oh. if you do go, I'm tripping. Yeah. It's catching yourself afterwards. Like, right. oh, you know, that was my emotions. You know, that was my right. ego. Yeah. Okay, let me stop and calm down yes. and come back. Yes. And let me really and remind yourself this person has your best interest at heart. Absolutely. Like, I think there's a lot of distrust just in general in the world. Like, right. I think that's why people have so much trouble dating. They don't trust each other. Right. And they don't believe that others have their best interest at heart. Absolutely. I have his best interest at heart. He has my best interest at heart. Absolutely. I know that. Yeah. So we can hear from each other. Yeah. I tell people all the time, life is an ongoing education. You're constantly cramming for a test. Yeah. And uh, some of us like to take our test slowly, and then some of us have to cram. And you don't <laughs> expect for it to pop up the way it does. But uh, I think uh, in the midst of that, take notes and just learn from everything and anything. I mean, you know, Tracy and I, we laugh and talk about all the time, you know, like, well, today I may like peas. And then she'll come and say, babe, I'm going to make you some peas. I can't stand peas. Why would you make them? And she's like, wait a minute, you, lo you love peas yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. It's like, wait a minute. But we're, we're constantly changing. And right. so yes. we right. have to, we have to, I've, I've learned we have to be like the palm tree. You bend, but you don't break. Yeah. You know, you have to adjust. And, 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 and that's what, uh, what helps us to, uh, to grow, you know. So I think that sometimes when we're self-aware, um, or at least working to be self-aware, and we're also compassionate, um, we, as you mentioned, Tracy, like you said, he told me what he'd experienced early on, and I knew this will we'll, this will come back at some point. We're gonna have to deal with this, which is a heavy thing to know. Um, but what do you guys have any suggestions for when you see these things in your partner, and? They just don't seem to want to address it. You know, when you're dating, you need to pay attention to those kinds of things. Um, if a person is just closed off and they just don't even want to see right. themselves at all, you know, that's that's really, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible, right. but that is going to be a challenge, a huge challenge, because at least someone needs to be able to see themselves in some kind of way, if, even if it's pointed out. Maybe they can't see themselves by themselves, but if you're in a relationship with them and you point something out, and just like he said, they might be defensive in the beginning, but if they come back and say, you know, you know, I, I just thought about what you said, and, and that's what you have to, I'm telling you, that's the makings of a relationship. You know, I don't know how you can really have a relationship if no one is willing to be transparent in some kind of way or in introspective. I, I don't really know how, how you really could move forward um, and really have intimacy. I don't know. Um, so what I've found is words don't teach, our example does. Yes. So That's we can be an example of that for them mm -hmm. and share that with them and vulnerability is what connects human yes. beings. Yes. So even people who have not learned this behavior, if they can see it modeled for them yeah, and be in a safe, compassionate space, mm -hmm. I've seen people be able to transform themselves right. and be able to do it once they see that example mm -hmm. and they're taught how to do it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? When Anthony and I were first dating, there were moments I used to say like, I feel like his ex-wife is with us. Like she is in between us all the time. And 
I just said, I'm just gonna keep pouring love on this guy until right. he recognizes that I'm not her, mm -hmm. that I'm gonna love him different mm -hmm. than what they were able to have with each other. I'm not her. So it was always my example. I always just kind of was like, I'm gonna show up as love for him. And he did some stuff yeah. that made me like, ugh. Well, but, how do you know when do that's it. too much? I think that what you just said is beautiful and it's romantic. And I think many of us do it. Right? Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be more loving than that pain. But when do you know that that the pain, the pain and the distraction of the past is outweighing all that you're pouring in? Yeah. You know, for for me, it's I go by my intuition and I go by my spirit. Yeah. I have a very close relationship with my spirit, and my spirit is my guide. And when my spirit says go in, I go in. When my spirit says go the other way, I go the other way. And I think that's an important part of having a relationship. You have got to have a close relationship with your own spirit so that you can hear your own guidance. It's not out there, it's in here. I knew inside of me that this was worth me pursuing and worth me sticking by him. I've dated other people before him where my spirit was like, girl, you go and get in the car and drive away. Like, you're done here. <laughs> Your work is done here, right? Move on. And you know, I also think it's the other person's willingness to work on it. Even if I can't move at the pace that you want me to, I see it and I, I'm, I'm aware of it and I'm trying to work on it. So as long as you're trying to make that effort, that's important and also when stuff pops up that you see, how do you need me to come at you to bring it? How do I present it to you? Right. Because it's the person may want to work on it, but if you come at them, then they're going to shut down. So what we did was we created this thing I called landmines. So it's like, okay, there's a landmine buried here. And every time we touch on this or you bring it up and go, hey, why are you doing this right? Boom, we both blow up. And then we like those cartoon characters with the, with the soot and the smoke and, and it's like, we keep stepping on this and we keep blowing up. Okay, here's the deal. I know that this is my landmine. I know that this is my stuff and I'm working on it. But please, while I'm working on it, do not keep pointing it out and stepping on it because we both explode. So I'm gonna put this little flag on top of it. So please just go around it. And meanwhile, I promise you, I'm working on this. But I can't do it at your pace, the way you do it. I have to do it my way. But and that likewise, verbalization is important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. likewise, she has her landmines, too. Right. And it's the same thing. I see them. We talked about it. Respect. Okay, I'm going to back off. And I'm going to allow you the space for you to work at it at your pace. And I'm not going to point it out. And if in, in, in this event that I actually accidentally step on a landmine that I didn't know was there, Please forgive me, that was not my intention. It'll never be my intention to do that. Right. And so it's creating that, having that dialogue and having a strategy for dealing with it. So I know that for you guys, or you can correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, one of the reasons you even sought grief counseling therapy in the first place was because of Tracy, because of this relationship, this person, you know, how it was manifesting. And one of the things that Melanie said was that if you don't have that example of of seeing and experiencing people dealing with trauma, um, then you don't really know how to do it. So how would you say specifically, because you mentioned your past trauma, like what even prompted you to, to work on yourself? And then again, you guys correct me if I'm wrong about sort of the beginning of you deciding, I need to do something here. I need to address this head on. For me, I just got tired of being on cruise control. I mean, you're dealing with 40 years of cruise control, you know, the car basically isn't stopped. <laughs> you know, the oil is gone, the engine is gone, you know, tires are gone. <laughs> you know, you got 300,000 to 400,000 miles on that car. It's just, you, you get tired of being tired. And for me, uh, talking to Tracy and she was like, you know, this elephant that's in the room is becoming a dragon. And it's been a dragon way before I got here. So we need to either cut it off at the head or we need to stop feeding it so it can starve itself to death. But something needs to happen. And the safety that I felt with her was, I got you. What you're feeling is on you. It's, it's what you're feeling. And no one's ever told you that it was okay to feel that way. I'm telling you it's okay to feel that way. And in the midst of that, I got you covered. I have your back 150%. No one will know that side of you unless you, like I am right now, 
telling it, yeah. you know. We thank you. Thank you. Trey? I'm just, I'm just happy that at some point he was open to the grief counseling because um, I don't, I'm not sure, we had already been in counseling, put it this way, we had already been in counseling from, we, we had premarital counseling at our church. Well, we had counseling but before that. But even before that, yeah. we, went, we did individual counseling because both of us had traumatic marriages before. And so we didn't want to bring that drama and all that other stuff. And just like she was saying that, you know, um, you were, we were talking to our exes, exes. I'm not when we her. were talking. And we'd have to right. remind each other. Yeah. Within your relationship. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we'd have to remind each other all the time. I'm not her. I'm not, I'm not him. I'm not him. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd have to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so once we recognized those things and we had gone through um, our therapy for a year, um, for a year individually and then a year together. Um, and then there were some, but I still realized that there were some things that we hadn't discussed in, in therapy. And that was the trauma that he had dealt with from the time he was 11 years old. And so, um, and, and then, you know, he just had these, he was so moody and he couldn't even control it. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. You went through therapy for a year, but didn't talk about this? He we, mentioned it. We, it, was, it was like, it was like you know how you scale over something? Yeah. You don't really clean the whole counter. You just kind of... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just kind of went year. over. Yeah. Yeah. I we, mean, I bring that up for two reasons. Yeah. One, because it's fascinating. But two, because we, we have to recognize yeah. that we have to be self-aware, you know, uh, address our issues, our past, but then also recognize, so we meaning individually and then our partners who are observing us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. recognize that we still could be skipping things. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You kind of assume like someone's in therapy, great, I'm gonna right. marry him, he in therapy, yeah. what? Right. Right. You exactly. know, but you don't know what they're hiding from right. their therapy, what, they're, what right. they're not dealing with. Exactly. So we still have to pay attention and you were doing that. I assumed, honestly, that he was discussing those things when he was in his his private therapy for yeah. appointments. I assumed that he was. Um, but then, you know, T Tony was really good at, you know, covering things cruise in control. the beginning because he was on cruise control. He, he had real, decades of experience. Decades. Right. decades. Deflecting. And, exactly. Uh -huh. And so, so when we, when we got married, that's when the things started really coming out. Um, where I could see him behind closed doors. And, you know, he was very, you know, it was very obvious. And so um, that's when I realized, okay, there's something we have not discussed. We have not gotten down to the nitty gritty of what's really going on. Um, because his moods were just changing all the time. And I didn't know when it was gonna change. And I, and I told him, I said, okay, time out. We have to, right now, we have to do something about this. And I asked him, I said, would you be opposed to going to grief counseling? And he was like, no. So when he, got, when he went, to, he didn't really know that it was gonna help anything or do anything, he was just going. But I remember him telling me that that was the best thing he'd ever done. Because then he realized really how deeply the trauma had really affected him. Yeah. You know, we've been like, uh, this is like, what we learned with couples in general. We see it in coaching and our relationship. And it's what drives a lot of couples crazy. I learned early on that in this relationship, I'm not just in a relationship with Melanie. There's two people, at least. There's Melanie and there's little Melanie. And there's little Melanie with her little at least, right. So all the versions of us that ever existed energetically are just as alive as we are today. So this adult Melanie is brilliant. But every now and then something would happen and she'd just trip out and flip on me. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell's going on? What's, what's, what's this about? And she would just, like, any, the more sense I tried to talk into her, the crazy it would get. And after a while, I realized, oh, that was a trigger. And when she gets triggered, little Melanie shows up. And I'm trying to talk sense into a little girl, a little eight-year-old girl. At that point, that little girl, she doesn't need someone to talk sense into her. She just needs to feel loved and feel safe and feel heard. So I realized I had to build a relationship with little Melanie as well as adult Melanie. And when little Melanie showed up and flipped out on me, I had to learn not to take it personally and be like, oh, that's just her, you know? And it wasn't, a, and it works the same thing with me, but it's not a past to go, 
you're going to get away with everything just by showing, hey, my little girl's here. No, she knew that she had to work on hers, that heal herself. But in the process, while that little girl popped up, it was like the more I learned, that little girl learned to love and trust me, the more adult Melanie learned to love and trust me. And she did the same thing with me as well. I think the funny part about that is a lot of us don't realize, especially for those that want to be married, you know, Tracy and I, between the both of us, we have 105 years in the bed. You got two people. It's 105. 52. 53. Oh. 105. 52 and 53 years old. <laughs> years in the bed. And so when you're dating, you don't realize that that person, if that person's 40 and you 40, that's 80 years. So the two shall become one. So you're pushing all of your relatives and all of your past generational curses and right. all of them family right. members and everybody is going into one. And that hurts. And I think the problem is, is that we're so hell bent on the wedding. Oh my God, and I'm gonna have this dress and it's gonna go from here all the way to Alaska. <laughs> and I'm gonna have these bees running down my head. I'm gonna have security on both sides. All of this stuff, you spend all that money and nobody put the emphasis in the marriage. Yeah. We don't put the emphasis in the marriage. We'll do more. We, a lot of us will put more emphasis on what type of rims and tires we want in our car on a lease or whatever it is, then we will put, okay, what is it that I need to invest in that woman or what is it I need to invest in that man? Mm -hmm. And when you start to invest, you will see a return. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't investing in nothing, <laughs> you're not gonna receive a return in nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing from nothing leaves what? <laughs> exactly. I appreciate you guys so much for sharing your stories with us. Like without vulnerability and transparency from you, this whole black love, after love, literally wouldn't exist. So I appreciate you and I hope that um, folks can take from your stories and not have to go through, you know, the, the stepping stone, well, you know, the, the harder parts, right? They go straight to, oh, well, this is what Tony did, so let me just, <laughs> let me just go ahead and do that. And thank you to you guys for joining us for episode three of After Love, the official Black Love After Show. See you next time.